What has California Indian Legal Service done for the Native communities in California? Let's go back 50 years to 1967, when the frequency and complexity of legal problems faced by California's Native American population was the catalyst to inspire George Duke and a young Hoopa activist named David Risling to incorporate California Indian Legal Service as a distinct program dedicated to Native American issues. Bob Pelziger had come out to visit Monroe Price, a friend of his, a professor at UCLA. Uh, out of that meeting evolved again with some Hoopa folks, and I don't know all of the folks who were involved at the time, but grew the concept of California Indian Legal Services. Uh, they submitted a grant application to the Ford Foundation at the time, and that's how California Indian Legal Services got started. Prior to CILS, we had no legal recourse or representation of the tribes. Couldn't afford attorneys. During the 1970s, CILS expanded from just one office to offices in Bishop, Escondido, Eureka, and Ukiah. CILS took on major issues impacting tribal sovereignty, such as restoring reservation lands, quantifying tribes' reserved water rights, obtaining equitable federal funding for California tribes, litigating discrimination and civil rights and fortifying tribal governments. CILS served as a watchdog for California tribes when the Bureau of Indian Affairs did not act in the best interest of the tribes. The United States government did things like that, not only here but other places, where they, they needed something, they took it. They took it without asking. They didn't care who suffered. They didn't care that they had given that right. That right was ours. CILS established that a local county or state could not force its zoning and building codes upon the tribe's reservation trust property, even in a state subject to Public Law 280, as in the Santa Rosa Band of Indians versus Kings County in 1975. Then in 1979, California Indian Legal Service ensured that Native American children would get full and equal access to a public education as in the Ketchum Indian Tribes versus San Pasquale Valley Unified School District. Through the 1980s, CILS succeeded in protecting pristine and sacred forests for the Yurok, Karuk, Talawa, and Hupa people. Because of California Indian Legal Services, we have been able to assert our sovereign right in protecting our water resources. They won the right for California Indians to have a level of federally provided health services comparable to those provided to Indians elsewhere in the nation because of the Rincon Band versus Harris. CILS also helped restore over 30 tribes who had been terminated in the 1950s. We're out here in the dark. We're out here in the dark with absolutely no resources, no opportunities to go beyond the world that we live in, which is small, crowded, unfunded, I mean, dealing with everyday issues like cows wandering through the streets, like lack of water, lack of roads, lack of health care, lack of funds for for day-to-day -day living. How would we ever have been able to say, oh, hmm, legislation, injustice. We were too busy. We were too busy trying to survive. They took on cases like Tilly Hardwick versus the U.S. in 1983. Those restoration efforts can be seen today in thriving tribal communities where tribes can enjoy a government-to-government -government relationship with the United States because of California Indian Legal Services efforts. In 1987, CILS sued and negotiated a settlement to allow Native prisoners access to their spiritual practices while in state institutions, establishing Native American chaplains within the state's prison system. It was CILS attorneys that participated in the landmark case of the Cabazon Band of Mission Indians versus California, which successfully overturned California's authority to regulate bingo on Indian reservations. And it opened the door for tribes to develop gaming facilities, which brought much needed revenue to their reservations. CILS negotiated some of the original compacts for the tribes and developed the regulatory codes and framework needed for Indian gaming. Gaming has resulted in many tribes today becoming financially independent. The 1990s brought a new era of economic development as the tribal governments were just gaining strength. Legal support for tribes in drafting constitutions and ordinances was and is an ongoing component of protecting tribal sovereignty. 
CIRS was instrumental in the passage of comprehensive state legislation commonly known as SB 678 that extends federal ICWA protection to California's Indian children in 2006. The American Indian Probate Reform Act, the protection of cultural resources, the strengthening of tribal governance through tribal court and law enforcement development were also issues CLS addressed and protected. CILS's success in implementing ICWA can be seen throughout California Indian Country. The original CILS California Judicial Officers Bench Guide on the Indian Child Welfare Act was created in 2010 and is cited both statewide and nationally as a definitive resource on the evolving ICWA laws. CILS also remains at the forefront of assisting tribes in developing courts and law enforcement agencies by providing training, drafting codes, and orchestrating statewide conferences. They work to end Franchise Tax Board's attempts to create a tribal source rule, which would have taxed the income of tribal members living and working on their own reservations. CILS successfully defeated three University of California professors' legal challenge to block repatriation of ancient Kumeyaay human remains in White First University of California and Kumeyaay Cultural Repatriation Committee in 2016. Then CILS sponsored AB 233 allowing Native students the right to wear religious, ceremony, or cultural adornments at school graduation ceremonies as proud symbols of their community's pride in their accomplishments in 2017, protecting cultural identity. California Indian Legal Services is one of the oldest nonprofit law firms devoted exclusively to the cause of Native American rights. Governed by a board of trustees selected by California tribes and tribal organizations, CILS has provided free and low-cost legal services to California tribes, tribal organizations, and Native American individuals throughout the state for five decades. The mission of CILS is to protect and advance Indian rights, foster Indian self-determination, and facilitate tribal nation building. Today, CILS maintains four offices throughout California and is supported by grants from the Legal Services Corporation, the State Bar of California, private foundations, individuals, corporate contributors, tribal donations, and contracts from a host of California's 110 federally recognized Indian tribes. CILS has produced some of the best Indian lawyers in California. Congratulations for 50 years of service to the tribes of California and protecting the rights of California Native Americans. CILS looks forward to what the next 50 years will bring.